Email, cool, right. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where today, well, actually, it's not really just my YouTube channel, it's my YouTube channel, it's my um, IGTV, it's my uh, Facebook watch. Is that a thing? I think that's the name. Anyway, I'm really clued in on what I'm doing here. Um, but today, I'm going to be picking out My Lions 41 for the upcoming British and Irish Lions Tour to South Africa. It's actually happening in South Africa, and the reason I'm doing that is because today the coaching staffs are being announced for that. Um, I'm recording this on Monday, it's going out on Tuesday. I think Tuesday at 9am is when it's being announced. So I'm trying to tie this in with that because there should be a bit of bit of hype there. So I'm hoping for a few more views in that sense. Obviously, what, what the key thing is with all this is it's completely my opinion. Um, and this is one of the most contentious topics in rugby every four years. I mean, realistically, it rages on for, for three, four years at a time. <laughs> it basically rages on for three years at a time um, in the lead up to every tour. Let me know below. In the comment section is probably the easy way of putting that. Uh, let me know in the comment section what you, who you think, sorry, um, should be getting a place on the plane. Uh, so I'm going to start off in the in the pack, and I'll start off with the Fords. Um, it's just occurred to me I really should co connotated where exact uh, <laughs> where which players have actually been on lines tours before. I think I can actually remember most of them, so we should be okay in that sense. Uh, starting off, um, it's in a random order. It's not alphabetical or anything like that. So I'll just I'll just kind of run into it. Uh, tag. Tag Furlong, Ireland and Leinster, goes without saying really, he's, he's one of the best tight head props in the world. Uh, I think in terms of a player, first who's been on Lions test before, he's got Lions caps, and, and then also a player who's good with his hands, he's good at scrummaging, he's good in the loose, this, that and the other, lends himself really well. Then also I've gone with Wynne Jones of Wales and Scarlet's obviously probably the form player in terms of the Six Nations uh, in the pack, so I'd go with him, certainly. Then Mako Vanapolo, again, a former Lion um, of England and Saracens, again, goes without saying, very much like Tag, tag Furlong, so in many, eye, in many people's eyes, in the Northern Hemisphere sense, those two are like the perfect props because they can do the scrummaging, but then they're also really good in the loose. Um, then uh, this is my first kind of wild card that I've gone for. I've probably picked too many props as well. I'm looking at it now, I wish I picked another hooker, but it is what it is. Um, Scotland's Rory Sutherland um, came on the, back on the scene in 2020 and then is, is carried on until this season. I just think he's a really good scrummager. I think I think it's a really good he's a really good scrummager um, and warranting potentially of a place in this squad. But then again, that's not the loose head now. So I'm, I'm <laughs> I've already got loads of loose heads. Um, then I've got Carl Sinclair of England and Bristol again, very similar to Furlong uh, and Vanapola in that sense, good in the loose but also a decent scrummager as well. I think his importance to England was shown as soon as he came back into that squad uh, during this year's Six Nations. Um, Thomas Francis, another former tourist. I can't remember if he got called up partway through the 2017 tour, but in terms of someone that Gatlin knows, someone that Gatlin likes and, you know, would lend himself well to this environment, I think Francis is another one. But he, again, like Sutherland, is one of those I'm kind of like, I'm and ahhing about because especially when I've put in Will Stewart of Bath in England, I think his importance has been shown. He's he's proven himself when he's had the opportunity to start for England, but then also at club level, he's just been so consistent and so, you know, really good for Bath um, and such a big part of how they play. Then I've gone with Kean Healy of Leinster and Ireland. Um, again, former tourist, maybe not as like peak as he was a couple of years ago, but still someone I... I very much like to see. And then finally, I've gone with Andrew Porter because of that capability that he has to play on either side of the scrum. So, yeah, I'm looking there. I mean, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine players there. So for a tour, it's, it's probably one or two too many. However, I'm trying to think about big South African packs coming up against these um, these guys. Obviously, there's still so much up in the air about this tour. We don't really know what it's going to look like. Um, then if we just jump into hookers, I've gone with Luke Cowan Dickey. I think him becoming England's starter is so important and I think it proved it well you know for many many years he's actually been sat there on the sidelines and people have been saying he should be starting and I think since he's actually been given the opportunity to do so he's done really well um then I got with Ken Owens of, of Wales and Scarlet 34 I think at the moment is is the sheriff um and I just think yeah it, it's one of those where I'm trying to think actually who out of the hookers in the Six Nations had the best kind of 
the best go of it, so to speak. Like I was actually looking at Scotland, but actually because Scotland were injured, it's so difficult to say exactly who you'd want to pick out of that. So I just went with, yeah, I went with a, with a, someone from the winner, also again, someone that Gatlin knows. And then finally I went with Jamie George, because again, he's not the former tourist. I did a manara about Rob Herring being a South African. And we saw with the 2017 tour to New Zealand, when Jared Payne um, of Ulster and Ireland was selected, it was because he was a local, he was a Kiwi who ended up playing for Ireland. So um, I think there's a couple more players like that. Um, as we go a bit further on, but actually not not massive not massive amounts I must say actually, which I was actually quite pleasantly surprised that I didn't didn't just kind of put in because it was like in the, in the pack I thought about putting W P Nell in because he's South African and probably could deal with some loose heads that maybe someone else couldn't. Um, and then if we jump to second row, I've gone with Alwyn Jones uh, of Wales and Ospreys, probably my captain as well, but that's because I love him. Uh, Love, well, yeah, that's that's an interesting way for me to say that word. Then Maratojo of England, Saracens again, just really consistent player, one of England's best performers during the entire Six Nations. Um, then James Ryan again, someone everyone's been talking about. He's been a name on a lot of people's lips um, since breaking onto the scene, really, as as being a Lions tourist. Um, then we follow that up with actually, I'll just change the the, the <laughs> my list around slightly just for a, a key reason. Then Johnny Gray of Scotland, the next. I just think. Brilliant player, barely misses a tackle, very good in the line out. Um, just an all round, really good player. And Tag Burn uh, is my final one of Ireland and Munster. Because of that ability to play in the back row, he got the most turnovers in the Guinness Six Nations this year. I think it was like 11. And then the, no, the closest person to him had eight. And I can't actually remember off the top of my head who that is. But it's probably one of these people in the back row <laughs> column here. Um, but Tag Burn, again, versatility, again, an important thing on a Lions tour and that goes for Itoji who can also play in the back row. I think he did play in the back row in 2017, could be wrong there, but it does feel like a long time ago. Uh, yeah, it feels like a very long time ago, a lot longer than four years. Maybe that's because we've lost a year of our, year of our lives because of um, COVID-19. I'm recording this on the day the pub's open. Uh, obviously, I'd say haircut, but I've already been Tommy Shelby. Um, <sighs> debate about the pub. Hmm. We'll be... We'll be we'll, <laughs> will we be watching the Lions tour in the pub this summer yeah summer um because it's april um and the back row this again really contentious because i basically picked four sevens yeah i basically picked four sevens and two eights which is the way it's gone here uh, so i've gone with tom curry of england the sales sharps one of england's best players again like myra toji uh sam underhill of england bad didn't play in the six nations but really really good player I think that goes without saying really good defensively and his carrying's improved a lot as well which is something that's probably quite underrated about him and then apparently it's the man of the moment the man with the most contention around him Hamish Watson of um, Scotland and Edinburgh he was described as potentially being too small but actually when you look at the statistics someone like Anadi Sarve is only 95 kilograms I think Hamish weighs a little bit less than that but he was the Six Nations player of the tournament and if you watch him play, I don't think that's got anything to do with it. He's battle, he can battle through. I'm pretty confident he will be aligned this summer. Then Justin Tipperick, a former tourist. He's actually the first former tourist on this list. And then I think the next two are as well. Yes, yeah, so Tipperick of Wales and Ospreys. It goes without saying he's a wonderful footballer. If there's kind of a way of looking at that, he played sevens at the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Um, just an all-round brilliant player. And he was one of Wales' most consistent players because even though they won the Six Nations in the end, there were some ups and downs for various players. And I think he was one of the ones that was generally on and up. Um, then Talupe Falatau of Wales and Bath. He's been brilliant all season. It's so good to see him fit again. Um, maybe the key is that fitness kind of side of things. And then finally, I've gone with a, another South African gentleman who... Um, represents one of these four nations in CJ Stander of Ireland and Munster. Again, there is a part of that is because he is South African. That is, you know, it's his bread and butter. And also what better way to see out a career than going on a tour with the British and Irish Lions to your home country and potentially winning a series there. So that would be pretty cool if that was to be the case. Uh, then obviously that's my four pack uh, selections. Let me know, you know, yeah, we're about 10 minutes in. So if you actually go down there and comment now, what do you think of the forward pack with the timestamp? That would be cool. Um, <laughs> see, this is why four years ago I did this in two parts, because it takes so bloody long. Um, then in the backs, I've gone with, well, we'll start off with scrum half. I've gone with Conor Murray of Ireland and Munster. Showed in particular against England how important he still is to Ireland and how he hasn't quite been taken over yet by Jameson Gibson Park, who, funny enough, I've also put in this squad just for a bit of something different, because I only selected three scrum halves. Um, 
Sir James in Gibson Park, he, he just offers something a bit different. He's a bit more of a live wire than a Connor Murray or in fact a Ben Youngs, who's my other player. But Ben Youngs is kind of, I've noticed recently, he's in between the live wire stage and the playmaker stage. Maybe that's because at, at Tigers he didn't have to play that kind of playmaker anymore because Wigglesworth is there so he's got a bit of a different role now I don't know but those are my three scrum halves let me know exactly what you think about those then at fly half I think I've got a bit mental um <laughs> because I basically selected everyone um but this is actually where I made a controversial decision because I haven't selected jo uh, Johnny Sexton in fact I've selected Finn Russell of Scotland and Racing 92 because in my opinion when he's on form and he's on song he's the best fly half to watch in the northern hemisphere bar none. Um, then I've gone with Dan Bigger of Wales and Northampton, which again, I just think game management is, is a big thing. So yeah, that, that's, that's where I've gone there. Then Owen Farrell of England and Saracens, not the best Six Nations for him. This is what's got to be said with Farrell. The main reason I've selected Farrell is because he can drift into the centres. And again, versatility, an important thing. It's mainly that kind of past tourist, this would be his third tour. Uh, do I think he's been outstanding? No, but is he going to play plenty of rugby in the championship? It looks likely. Um, does Warren Gatlin trust him? Yes, he's been on two tours. So I, I just don't see why he wouldn't be. I don't necessarily think at the moment he'd be a starting tourist, but... I don't see any harm in having that. But then finally with the fly half situation, what I've done here is I've got a bit carried away and I've selected Callum Sheedy because I just think he showed in, in so many different parts of Wales's uh, Six Nations campaign how important he can be to that team, especially coming off the bench and coming off early like he did against England uh, and really making an impact there. So... Yeah, the, the, those were definitely the most contentious moves in my mind because I think Johnny Sexton, again, he would lend so much. But do I think that he'd be durable for a whole tour? No. So maybe he could be one of those late call-ups. I don't know. This is, again, this is an idea. Right? We don't even know what's happening with late call-ups at the minute. This could be a 50-man squad just purely for the fact that COVID protocols might mean that bringing people in and out of the of the bubble could be really difficult we don't know and this these are all the things we're going to find out i think tomorrow i don't know if i'm doing that press conference i don't know who is yet but i mean I, I might just do it for the sake of it to be honest but just to just to have some just to learn a bit more about the lions um so it's just about figuring out these different sorts of things uh at the moment which is the key thing then to the centers see i've picked four players one of them you would probably argue isn't even a center um but played center in the most recent uh six nations campaign that's george north of wales and ospreys obviously i just think he's lended himself so well to that position so far the only thing that you probably argue has got to be worked on a bit is defensive positioning but outside of that he's got a man called jonathan davies of, of wales and scarlets who again can lend himself well to that environment. So, yeah, that's where we're on. <laughs> you know, I've picked, I picked those two, the two Wales boys there. Um, and then also included Chris Harris of Scotland and Gloucester. I just think he's been magnificent for Scotland. He stepped up to international rugby with relative ease. The only thing is Hugh Jones coming in did kind of displace him uh, towards the end of the tournament. However, I feel like Charis, I'll call him Charis as if we're friends. Um, I feel like Charis has done enough to really kind of warrant his place in that squad. And uh, then also I put in Robbie Henshaw just because I thought he was bloody brilliant during the Six Nations. And he's such a joy to watch, plays 12 or 13. Again, most of these guys you'd argue are 13, but Harry, um, Henshaw and Davies play a lot at 12 at the minute. So I think they're, they're my men. Then... In the back three, this is where I had my biggest headaches because I was actually trying to work out who was like kind of in form. And I had to obviously admit some people. Uh, I think noticeable admit omissions would be James Lowe, Jacob Stockdale. I think two years ago I would have said Jacob Stockdale was a certifiable man to be on that plane. Now, not so much. Um, who else have I selected? Elliot Daly. But yeah, some wonderful talent there that I haven't selected just because I feel for me... The players I'm about to say are in better form, uh, have been on tours before, and I'm a fan of. This is the thing, this is my Lions 41. It's not your Lions 41, yours might be different. I want you to tell me below who you think it could be. Um, I think I had a comment about four years ago calling me a prat or something like that. Um, I'll find it, it'll be on the screen. Uh, and then, so basically for the back three, I've selected Lewis Rees of Wales and Gloucester. I think it's understandable why. The TikTok king, uh, as Jess Hayden calls him, I don't know, I don't... I don't actually have TikTok. Well, I do. I do have it. I don't understand it. 
I don't get it at all. Anyway, <laughs> we digress. Uh, Dylan van der Merwe of Scotland and then Edinburgh slash Worcester because he's joining Worcester in the summer, so I don't actually know where his registration will be at that point. Um, a South African going to South Africa and scored four tries. I think him and Rhys Samet might have been the joint top try scorers. Could be wrong there. And then a uh, Scotland teammate I've gone with. Stuart Hogg, Scotland's captain, so he could be in a leadership role for this tour. Again, I think this would be his third tour. So when you look at that kind of thing, sorry, I'm waddling around because I've, I've got a chair in case I get a bit tired and want to kneel. Then I've also selected Anthony Watson of England of Bath. I think he's just been in really good form. I just think he's been really good form. The only thing is, like, <laughs> it depends who comes on in the club game because we, we always expect a bolter. But however, it's not, I don't think it's, it's been a long time since there's ever been a bolter who didn't play international rugby for their country within the last 12 months of a Lions tour. I can't remember a time that happened. Obviously, 1997, Will Greenwood springs to mind. But other than that, because a lot of people have been saying Sam Simmons, and I'd love to see it. I'd love to see him, Joe Simmons. I'd love to see that. However, likely of that happening. So I'm feeling in my head because it's being a pain this morning. Um, so yeah, I really can't work that one out in my head at all. Uh, and then I've gone with Hugo Keenan of Ireland and Leinster. One of the, the the best kind of emergences in a while, I'd say in the back line in particular. Him and Lewis Rizama in the same back three could really, <laughs> that could really be exciting. Um, so yeah, played a bit of sevens with, for Ireland, I believe, at some stage. Um, yeah, I just think really good player. Then I've gone with Johnny May of England and Gloucester. Now, I really did, I really, really did go back and forth on this one because it became really difficult at this point. Because um, my issue is with this back, these back three selections, not many of them can slip into the centres, whereas a George North, for example, can slip onto the wing. Chris Harris could probably go on the wing. You could argue a George North can definitely go on the wing. Um, so that's where I've been struggling, in particular with these back three players. I, I, Maybe Hogg has the versatility to go into the centres, maybe Keenan at 13, um, but Johnny May on the wing is kind of where he goes. Uh, that's that's the only place you really put him. He, could, he played a bit of fullback at Tigers. I wasn't, it wasn't that I wasn't a fan of him playing at fullback for Tigers. It was just more that you didn't get to see him in full attacking flow like you would have necessarily if he was on the wing. Uh, but I'd select him for this 31, try scoring form of his life. Is he going to make another tour? No. Has he been in really good form recently, in particular the last 12 months? Yes. So for me, Johnny May gets on the plane to South Africa, to Durban or Johannesburg, wherever they're flying to first. And then finally, I went with Keith Earls, Keel Earls, um, Keith Earls of Ireland and Munster. Because plays a bit centre, full back wing, you know, there's all those kind of tools there for him. Um, and he could lend himself well to that. I just, I'm a big fan of Keith Earls. There's no real reason for that being the case, but I am just a big fan of Keith Earls. And I think. He's the kind of player on a tour, someone who, let me just Google something about Keith Earls, because I'm pretty, like, I'm pretty certain I'm correct. But Keith Earls, Keith, there he is, Keith Gerard Earls, what a lovely name, what a lovely name. Um, obviously, he went on the lines in 2009, I think he was the youngest player on that tour, come to think of it. Um... And I just think he's in great form. How many international tries has he scored? Yeah, Keith Earls scored 34 international tries. He must be so under the radar in terms of that because, yeah, admittedly, you look at some of the opponents he scored these tries against, you look at your Russias, you look at your Romanias, your Canadas, the USA, um, even Japan to an extent, even though that was in 2017, so maybe not even them, to be honest. I just think that he's so underrated that there's no reason in my mind that he shouldn't be on that tour and he'd be a good team player because at the age of, what is he? 33 now. I think at the age of 33, he's going to be more than just a team player. He's going to be a mentor to these younger lads in particular because when you look at that kind of, that demographic for the, school, for the back three in particular that I've selected, he, May and, him and May are the only ones over 30. Then obviously you look at the centres, you've got, I think Jonathan Davis is over 30. I'm sorry, Jonathan, if you're not. Um, I'm sure you're watching this. And yeah, I, I just think he'd lend himself really well to a tour environment. I don't know. 
Um, maybe it's because I because I really like watching him play. I don't know. Uh, it could be it could be one or the other. But yeah, so that's my Lions forty one. Uh, like kind of my initial forty one. Um, in whenever the, the squad's actually announced. I mean, if we're going off. So if today is the day that. Yeah. So if today is the day that. Well, tomorrow is the day that is being announced who is getting selected where and stuff. Then. It'll be in about a month or so, won't it? So yeah, I'd go with that. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching this. Let me know who you think maybe I should have selected or I should have selected. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. I've really enjoyed doing this. It's, it feels like four years ago again when I was at university with uh, with Jono filming on the rugby pitch at uni, which I'm, I'm, in retrospect feels far too exposed for myself to have done any of that, but very confident. Why was I so confident when I was 18? There's the question. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'm sure I'll see you next time.